Sergeant First Class Melvin Morris was just 19 when he became a Green Beret. He volunteered to go to Vietnam. <laughs> In 1969, under heavy fire, hit multiple times, bleeding, he rescued dead and wounded troops. The Army says he showed determination possessed by few men, and his ability to lead has rarely been equaled. Today, at 72, with his wife of 51 years, Mary, the pride, the dignity, and now a wrong will be made right. Morris is one of 24 veterans who, decades late, will receive the nation's highest military distinction, the Medal of Honor. It is a roll call of bravery and heroism above and beyond the call of duty for men who served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Only Morris and two other Vietnam veterans are still living. In 2002, Congress ordered a review of Jewish and Hispanic veterans' war records to find out who may have suffered discrimination and not been awarded the honors they deserved. Potential African-American discrimination was also found. All are now being recognized. I had heard uh, rumors to the fact that there were certain people who people thought should have received the Medal of Honor. Retired Marine and Vietnam vet Harvey Barnum received his Medal of Honor in 1967. His unit also under intense fire with complete disregard for his safety, he moved to save others. Now he has just one message for the Vietnam survivors. I look forward to putting my arms around them and call them brother and say welcome home. Two other living Vietnam veterans will receive the medal. Radio operator Santiago Aravia was under fire all day on May 21st, 1969. In total peril, he assaulted a line of enemy bunkers, throwing hand grenades and firing his M16. He came home to work for the Postal Service for 32 years. His son, Roland, served three tours in Iraq. Sergeant First Class Jose Rodella's battalion was under such heavy fire on September 1st, 1969, it suffered 42 casualties in minutes. Army records say the unit was on the brink of panic when Rodella stepped in, physically pushing men to fight, even as the unit was still under fire. Today, he is in frail health. Of the recipients who have passed away, some died in action in Europe, Korea, and Vietnam. But some, like Private First Class William Leonard of New York, who fought in France during World War II, came home to live out their lives. Leonard worked in the auto industry and as a butcher. He died five days before his 72nd birthday, sitting in his backyard, listening to a New York Yankees game on the radio. And the review was in large part sparked by the family of Private First Class Leonard Kravitz, who died in Korea trying to save his other men. He, of course, never met his nephew and namesake, the great musician Lenny Kravitz.